Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we're going to be talking about ceramic coatings on plastic and vinyl in your car and demoing the application. This is the first time I've done it with a product called um, Brightmax Obsidian. Welcome back to the channel guys, good to see you as always. So today, weather is starting to warm up and it makes all the detailing a little bit nicer and uh, a bit more enjoyable. Um, today, what I want to do on the M140, sometimes it's nice to do sp specific jobs on the car where that's all you do, you focus on one particular thing, rather than trying to do everything in one go where it becomes a nightmare and you end up speeding up and towards the end, everything you do, you just rush. So my goal for um, this morning was just to really clean the engine bay on the M140 to a good standard, which I hadn't done before, and um, then dress up all the kind of plastics and, and rubber in the engine bay. So I thought this was a good opportunity for me to test out ceramic coatings on um, interior on plastics and vinyl, which I hadn't done before. So I've got this product here, Obsidian Quartz from Brightmax. I've had it for a while actually. Um, Matt kindly sent it through with a load of Brightmax stuff that we sort of put on the channel, some of our polishes and stuff like that. And I thought this was a good opportunity to test this out. Now I've never used a ceramic coating before on um, on plastics, just, just never done it. Just always dressed them with, with normal things and all this ceramic technology seems to be kind of becoming more prominent at the moment and uh, I thought I'd just give it a whirl. So what do we do today? Well, the M140 guys I never really cleaned the engine out properly and I like sometimes to do specific tasks on the car like one particular day just clean the engine bay, one particular day of the year just clear out the wheel arches, sometimes just clean the interior because if you try and do too much in one day, the, the quality of, of what you do goes down and you get like faster and faster as you get more tired and tired, you know, and towards the end you just, just like everything goes south. Whereas if you're just doing one thing, you can say, right, I'm gonna do this to a really good standard, I'm gonna put an hour, two hours into it, and it'd be worth doing it properly. So that's what I did with the engine bay. Um, we've done a video on engine bay cleaning already where we've gone in depth on all the sort of stuff. In this video, I filled up a bucket with just some sort of foaming degreaser, or I think I used a wheel, wheel shampoo actually. You could use a citrus pre-wash, whatever you want. And we used the Brightmax grime out degreaser on the spray to load up the, load up the cleaning brush. And um, we got a load of, you know, trash microfiber that we could use and we just kind of worked my way around the engine bay, cleaned it, rinsed, hoovered it first, you know, and uh, got all the dust out of all the sort of uh, cloth components and the scuttle and that sort of stuff. Uh, degreased, worked loads of brush work, lots of rinsing, lots of wiping down, etc. You get the, you get the thing. Um, Use the grime out degreaser, which is a requirement for the um, for their coating, according to the instructions that come with the product. And once the engine bay was clean, then what I wanted to do was put some protection down on the various components in the car. Now, I'm a bit of a min minimalist nowadays, you know. Um, I've just come to the conclusion, and I've fallen into this trap myself, is you can, when, when you're cleaning your car, you can spend, you spend some of the time cleaning, and then at the end you kind of spend the time putting protection on. You can definitely fall into a trap of throwing too much protection on random things and dressings on things. And they can end up causing problems if you're using them too much. So I prefer to spend the time cleaning if I can, the horrible boring bit, but it's just probably the most important thing. Um, but I wanted to test out, you know, uh, a few things in this video. So I wanted to test out this Obsidian Quartz um, Brightmax trim coating. Um, well, I also just wanted to, so that's for plastic and kind of uh, vinyl one exteriors primarily, because it's giving protection to the elements, you know, um, rather than interior dressing. 
but I suppose you could use them on interiors, but there's just no point. It's a heavy duty kind of protection for, for plastics. Um, now, precursor to using that is to obviously degrease with um, a suitable degreaser, and they recommend you use Brightmax Grime Out, which is a product I really like. Quite a powerful degreaser that's ready to roll, quite strong foaming, you know, so it's good when you're working on a brush. You can see it sort of turn brown, you work it all around and rinse it all off, and it doesn't sort of cause any staining or kind of whitening of the trim or stuff like that when, with the residue after it's rinsed away. So it's quite a nice, nice uh, degreaser product. So we've got the engine bay ready. Beyond the ceramic coating, I used some um, high temperature paste wax in the engine bay. It's just a durable, cheap, effective sealant that's got a million and one purposes. If it moves, you can coat it with this stuff. Very good for alloys, exhaust, sink. It's not gonna get deteriorated by heat. Um, so I use this in the engine bay on the metal painted components, the runoffs and the kind of bits of the flitch that you could see in the um, top mounts, all the painted stuff, just to put some protection on them. You know, you don't really need to, but, but I like to live, live life dangerously. So we put that on. We also dressed some of the rubber, um, some of the rubber, soft rubber components in there with the old faithful Car Pro Pearl, which I really like, because it brings the black back as well as kind of, as well as kind of, um, you know, provide a nice dressing. But the main aim of this video was really to kind of observe the ceramic coating on the plastic trim. As I might have said before, I've never put a ceramic coating on plastic trim before, so I didn't know if this, whenever you see kind of like videos that are produced really well and you see them putting the coatings on the trim, it always looks so sexy and so kind of controlled. Um, the first thing about laying this coating down is, for me, in my opinion, and it's a very, very limited experience opinion, is there isn't kind of all of that in-depth prep required when you're putting it on paintwork. So putting ceramic coatings on paintwork is a is a you know a considerable undertaking, I think, as I said in the application video. Putting it on trim isn't, you just gotta get the stuff clean first and degreased. Um, once you've done that, really, um, the important thing to say is the plastics in the engine bay that I was applying it to seem seem like they they they're porous and the coating's almost absorbing into the into the plastic um, so what i found was quite simply on the flat pieces of plastic that i wanted to coat you could use the block applicators wherever they are be careful um, the block applicator is fine oh i'm always knocking stuff over but all around the scuttle area i thought it was just best to ditch the um, block applicator and just fold over the the suede applicator uh, the suede cloth put some in and just work it all around. And I, you didn't need to be too cautious about it. Just just make sure you've got everything covered um, and there isn't any sort of like pools or, or patches where you've put loads of product that you haven't shifted around. Just get it level and consistent, get it completely covered and leave it and you're done. And it doesn't really actually take much longer to apply the ceramic coating than a normal, um, than a normal dressing, which I thought was quite cool. Um, I think you've got to be very careful with dirt and grease in the engine bay um, and on these components because I cleaned very, very thoroughly, but we're still getting some some traces of of dirt coming off over the applicator. I suppose that's a faux pas, but I just think you're you're going to get that a little bit, especially on older cars. And my car's relatively new. If you're trying to dress a car that's old, you might need to spend a, a little bit longer cleaning and degreasing them. But the short answer is very, very easy to apply and use. Usually, you know, the, the saying less is more. I found more was more and more was better. And you, it was actually better to get a fair amount of the product all over the plastics that you were, you were treating. So you don't use this, or I didn't use this on rubber. It says it's for plastics and vinyl, so that's what I used it on. Didn't put it on every single compo plastic component in the engine bay, just the main things that are on display um, and the main things that you can easily access. Overall, um, performance-wise, you know, there is no way that I can sort of comment on how good this stuff is. The only way you would really comment is if you did some sort of bench test on a different set of test pieces of plastic and then you had a way to measure durability. But all I can say is there was no problems encountered with the product. Didn't change the appearance much, you know. It added a bit of gloss when it's wet, but then as it soaks in, it just looked like it did before, which is good. So it's not, 
it's not sort of creating some high gloss finish um, I'm, I'm, you're really just reliant on on how much these products really are giving you in terms of protection I don't think it's going to make a significant difference with like anything like scratch resistance or stuff like that in the engine bay so I'm not sure really um, it might make it a little bit easier to remove some of the dust that you know that sort of dust that you can get that greasy layer of dust that builds over them off of the the car I will let you know but what I can say very very easy to apply probably the main thing actually I'm forgetting there is UV resistance you know UV protection improvement which is a big problem for the scuttle the bit of plastic that sits against the windscreen that gets hammered by the sun all the time and tends to fade first so you might want to just put a little bit of extra on that top piece of the scuttle that is that's exposed so that was it really any other updates on the channel well, I've got a video, I'm not sure if it's going to come out in front of this one or after this one, uh, where we do the shootout of this stuff, so that's perfect finish. Um, oh, sorry, another, another sniff there, I'm a bit bunged up. Really impressed with this stuff. Um, and I got a chance to actually use it properly, doing a sort of full polish on a car, rather than just playing it around with it on test panels. And I had to use it in a scenario where you've only got two or three hours to polish the entire car. Um, which is you know probably a quite a normal scenario so you're trying to get results very quickly and um, you know using it in the field more than testing it and I was just equally impressed with the results and this was on hard hard Mercedes black paint that looked good initially but once we got it all cleaned and stripped down the paintwork was quite heavily swirled uh, I used it on the flex 3401 um, with white to Lake Country pads and got really good results with it um, found it really easy to use could work it really hard and fast to get the defect removal stuff done very quickly and then just a quick kind of um, you know kind of going over working it a little bit longer probably but probably no longer than 90 seconds per set per area and just work my way around the car very quickly um, wipe down done threw a sealant on top and the car looked good now it didn't you know it didn't remove every single defect but you're not this was a 10 year old Merc was it 10 2008 I think it was a 10 year old Merc um, but the, the the results that I got relative to the time that I spent were really impressive so I liked definitely think this is a really top tier abrasive this uh, Sonax perfect finish very good stuff another little update for you I talked about these into detailing Korean um, open pile microfiber. I think they're 350 GSM or 370. So they're a bit, little bit lighter than some of my other kind of buffing cloths. And the main thing about them was the price. They were 195 if you bought 10, which was incredible, incredible good value. These have now done four cars, you know, so I've used them for polish removal on four cars and they've been through four wash cycles or maybe five wash cycles. So I think I did put these in and wash them all before I used them, I can't remember. Um, and the cloths are still holding up really, really nice. Um, still nice and soft and fluffy. I, you know, I'm always washing them on their own. They've still got that fluffy quality, you know, where you, you really feel the softness in the microfiber. Um, so they are a really, really good good little tip and I know Imran is selling a lot of them now because of that because of that low price and they're underpriced there's no I said in the other videos they're not going to stay at 195 for 10 forever and I think they may well have already gone up or they're going to go up a little bit soon because there's no margin in them so capitalize before Imran puts the price up is, is my is my tip really really good good bargain high quality cloth that is so they're available from into detailing I'll link everything I've used in this video because it's all good stuff all down in the description so if you want to um, if you want to coat your plastic and trim then obsidian quartz seems like a good option to me and if you're looking for a polish recommendation for a one step that you can use you know works good on the DA works well on the rotary um, the so Sonax perfect finish although it's expensive is a very easy to use product that delivers you a lot of cut and a very high level of finish in a short time frame um, and it's nice it comes off the panel really nice as well you just don't have to use a lot of it I've used less than half for one car which is hard to gauge so even a little sample bottle of it 
it's probably the way to go if you just want to check it out. 250 mil sample bottle for 12, 13 quid, whatever it costs. Okay, other than that guys, we are done. This was just a quick one, completely off the cuff flying by the seat of the wire, seat of my pants or whatever that is. Anyway, enough waffling. Uh, stay tuned to the channel, guys. I'll see you for more videos soon. Bye for now.